Um, and I would like to introduce you our second speaker, Roxana, Rosana Terminio. Uh, my apologies because before I said Rosario, uh, sorry for that. She's going to talk about the mobility of personnel between China and Europe, which is a topic that interests any SME that has uh, operations in China or intends to have them. It is undeniable that COVID-19 has disrupted international mobility. Borders have closed. There have been visa restrictions quarantines requirements and flight suspensions and these have played havoc with the cross-border movement of people. Uh, this phenomenon has created an unprecedented disruption to mob mobile employees and labor shortages forcing businesses to think in ways like never before and adopt a strategy of active management with a special focus on safety protocols, digital technologies and social security and tax implications. Rosanna today will explain how businesses with interest in China are coping with these restrictions and elaborate on the long term impact of this situation on the global mobility phenomenon and international expats assignments. Rosanna is the managing partner of Asset Corp China Business Consulting. Uh, company limited in China. Uh, she's graduated in economics and has a master in Asian studies. Uh, she's a consultant, a contributor and lecturer, uh, lecturer in a sp specializing in innovation and strategy for the organization, as well as human resources strategy. Together with two Chinese partners, she's managing uh, partner of Asecor Business Consulting since 2011, a consulting firm providing strategy consulting and operative solutions for European companies operating with and in China. Rosanna, we are very happy to have you here today and I leave the floor to you. Thank you so much for, for your introduction and thank you for helping me uh, to share my, my slides. Please stay with the, the previous page, uh, the introduction. Thank you so much. Uh, good day, everyone from uh, from Europe and China. It's my honor to contribute to this today's uh, training program to help uh, European SMEs to better understand how to do business in China. I would like to start the USME Center for giving me this chance, uh, the audience, of course, and particularly thank my uh, colleagues, Nora and Celine, who helped me uh, with their support to prepare this uh, content. We try to cover as many aspects as possible, and we hope this will be helpful for you. So thank you to go to the next slide. Uh, here you can see the content I'm going to expose in the next uh, 40 minutes uh, that has to do how the pandemic has shaped the mobility of people between Europe and China. And uh, partly to that, uh, how the SME, but not only, uh, should adopt their Chinese, uh, China strategy also in terms of, uh, of talent. Uh, one thing that has to be kept in mind is the background philosophy, which is behind all this policy, which is the zero COVID approach. And that this obviously influences uh, all the rest. We are not here to discuss about this, but to take it as a fact that we have to live with and to understand how this uh, can impact our operation between Europe and, uh, and China in terms of mobility of people for uh, business and work purpose. Uh, the impact of this approach, together with the effect of the pandemic as, uh, and the regulation has had an impact on the foreign population landscape in China that we will see uh, later. And this is showing us some trends that we can take into account for also for our uh, plans, for, for planning our uh, business strategy. I will end the uh, presentation trying to identify which uh, characteristics are recommended for the people you will uh, send to run your China uh, business and more in general, what does the global workforce expect and how to get ready to attract this kind of, uh, of talent. We will have then, uh, as you had in the previous uh, presentation, 10 minutes more or less for the Q&A session where I will clarify some doubts and have some uh, uh, more insight based on your, uh, on your questions. Next slide, please. This is me and I've been already introduced so we can move to the next slide and go directly to, to the point. Uh, we start with the major topic, which I are already uh, introduced, uh, which is the zero COVID approach, and is the one has been chosen by China since the beginning to successfully uh, manage the pandemic. I start to I try to search the definition of zero COVID approach in different uh, uh, sources, including the WTO official website, 
but I couldn't find. I only find only uh, this definition from the uh, Irish Times that you can uh, that you can read, which is basically the absence uh, for a suitable period of time of community transmission through strict control measure. So of course, this approach uh, is what is leading all the the decision making related to international mobility in and out of China, and this has to be kept into in mind. Uh, with all the respect that we will see later. And uh, this makes um, evident that international mo mobility at the moment is not the, the priority. Uh, the first impact of this strategy, as, as we all know, has been to close the borders. And as you can see from the different notice, there's been a gradual opening. And one of the first uh, uh, requirements that we, uh, the older people we are familiar with uh, uh, moving in and out of China recently, is a, a famous pew letter. <clears throat> we will see later what this pew letter means and how to, to get it. Uh, from September 2020, uh, there's been a removal of the restriction for the people which hold a, a valid res a residence permit and family. Uh, and uh, some of the people which were stuck out of China uh, during the pandemic, most of them could manage to uh, enter back in, into China, but still there are a lot of people which are uh, outside and uh, uh, some of them um, couldn't manage to enter because maybe the visa got expired. Uh, but for example, the people which have a uh, resi permanent residence uh, permit, um, which uh, uh, can also co be called green card, they never had problem to uh, enter in and out of China. And we will uh, speak about this uh, again later when we speak about the kind of profile of uh, people to be hired in China that are eligible to become green card uh, holders. Uh, so uh, of course, these people have to do uh, the old procedure to enter and also the quarantine, but they didn't need to apply uh, for a pew letter. Uh, so this uh, list of uh, restricted country is, as you can read, is gradually uh, reduced. And uh, uh, it seems, uh, of course, this uh, has to do with the, the level of the pandemic and also the mutual recognition of the vaccine. Uh, for the family reunion, is uh, still very high, uh, very hard, or also to enter uh, with the family. But there are uh, successful cases, so this means this is not uh, uh, is not impossible. And uh, uh, of course, the support of the company uh, is important in this application to make it uh, to make it possible. What has to be, uh, of course, said that maybe for the SMEs is uh, not as easy as for much bigger company to get this kind of uh, approvals. Next one, next slide. So what is the PU letter? Actually, it does just mean standard invitation letter as there is another template, which is a special invitation letter for some higher level uh, purposes. At the present, this letter is a, a must requirement for uh, the people that have to apply for visa for enter China in case they do not hold a valid visa. Uh, and for those people which hold a visa, but it's uh, from a country which are uh, restricted. Uh, so as you can read from, uh, from this list, uh, this is uh, uh, the requirement that uh, could be um, helping the company applying uh, for a PU letter to bring the people into China to have a successful uh, application, uh, especially in case you have uh, uh, got uh, uh, obtained a uh, vaccine, uh, particularly the, the, the Chinese vaccine. And also if you are under this condition and you are able to explain why is it absolutely necessary that you uh, come to, uh, to China in this moment and you have some evidence to explain this emergency uh, and uh, uh, urgency with the, for example, contract or other document that are request during the application. Most of the uh, time, it's, there is a very high chance that you can get a pew letter. At least our uh, personal experience is that the, uh, the, uh, the authorities quite, are quite helpful and supportive, provided that, again, you need to, you, you are able to uh, explain why this um, visa and why is uh, absolutely necessary that this person uh, is, uh, is uh, coming to China. And this is, of course, also related with the zero COVID approach 
So if this is not absolutely necessary for the person to come uh, and it cannot be demonstrated, it is very hard in that case to obtain a pure letter. Next slide. With regard to the vaccination, uh, I hope uh, personally that there will be a global recognition of uh, at least uh, all the WTO approved vaccine so that we can uh, have a, a more uh, agile mobility between, uh, between the, uh, the country. Uh, with regard to uh, China, uh, I couldn't find any official mention that there uh, is a recognition of the WTO approved vaccine as it, is, at, at, it has been done, for example, from French or uh, France or Spain, but in practice there's been seen some uh, case by case approval where the uh, vaccination, no matter which kind of vaccine, has been considered as a, a additional positive element to obtain the uh, vaccination or so, sorry to obtain the pure letter or to uh, obtain the visa in the um, uh, embassy or consulate of the country of origin. Uh, starting, for example, with uh, uh, with USA, but also for some uh, European uh, European country, uh, it also applied to family member which got uh, vac vaccination. Uh, from the official uh, website and other sources, you can see also which kind of European country uh, and uh, country from the European area. Uh, are approving, uh, accept WTO approved vaccine or, or Chinese uh, vaccine, uh, though the list of this country is uh, might be not uh, comprehensive in this uh, slide, because uh, you will, uh, because I, I, will, I couldn't find, for example, in Shenzhen visa updated list, but you can find from local uh, consulate or some other um, sources, uh, official or not, uh, more or less official sources, you can find a country that are uh, recognizing WTO or Chinese vaccine, and this of course uh, help in the application of the Q letter and also in the in the mobility of the people, especially the uh, European country that accepts WTO approved vaccine makes easy also for the uh, citizen of uh, you which are coming back to see their family to move uh, freely and uh, more um, uh, easily uh, within the EU or within their own country, as also in the EU, as it is the case in China, you need to show uh, a, green, uh, a green code to move, uh, to move freely. And in some cases, the vaccine is a compulsory to, to get this, uh, this green code. Uh, here in, the, in this slide, you can see also one example of one uh, app you can download when you arrive enter China. So once you have completed your um, your quarantine and uh, uh, you you consider uh, you, let's say you are uh, able to uh, to leave and move freely, you can download this kind of uh, kind of app which allow you to get a, a green code uh, and. Uh, uh, Maybe some different location will uh, will require you to get a different app. This one, uh, if you try to scan it, you will not actually be able because I've I've uh, just used it as a template and uh, cancel some uh, some item. But uh, yes, this is more or less uh, what you will be requested to uh, download as a WeChat app to got your green card once you uh, green code when you finish your, uh, your your quarantine and you will be requested to show in a, in different situation and this is also part of the zero uh, covid uh, approach of course this depends on the evolution of domestic situation and in some specific cases uh, or area that you will be requested to get, to get additional uh, tests depending on the uh, on the situation next slide However, it seems the biggest problem, especially for uh, SMEs and especially in terms of cost, is not the vaccine or uh, the visa, but also is the situation of one of the industry, which has, uh, together with the tourist industry, has mostly suffered from the pandemic, which is the uh, aviation industry. As you can see from this uh, graphic uh, from IATA, uh, the level of uh, profit uh, per, per seat are not expected. This is related to the tourist industry, but we can uh, link this also to um, extrapolate also for, for, for other area, are not expected to return to pre-pandemic level before 2025. 20, uh, 
other reports uh, related with the, also this industry, but also to the air post, uh, air post business, um, show uh, more or less the, the same uh, expectation. So the more optimistic pro, uh, forecast is that the situation will uh, become better gradually, uh, especially starting from 2023, and the most pessimistic approach from uh, 2025. And um, well, we, we will we will know uh, actually with the time if the the, the truth will uh, will be in uh, maybe in the middle or in the more uh, positive, uh, uh, optimistic um, forecast. Uh, one of the things also mentioned by this report is in fact actually how the business travel are affected by the pandemic, and uh, it is expected that is one of the industry which will. Uh, maybe never go back as before. Probably there will be more uh, local in some uh, big local area, for example, like within Europe or within Asia Pacific and less frequent international travel. This of course, of course will mean there uh, will be a significant cost to be taken into account from the SMEs together with the costs uh, related with obtaining the visa, uh, the certification and the quarantine. And this makes also um, necessary maybe to think that the people that should be sent to China might consider to spend a certain amount without uh, leaving the country. Uh, otherwise, uh, going back and forth as before might be um, a big uh, expense for uh, most of SME, I think. Uh, this has also reduced the possibility, as already been mentioned before, to go move frequently between uh, headquarters in China to exchange people. And uh, uh, it seems, uh, based on this research, that uh, the major restraining force to avoid this travel is not the cost actually, but is the required for the, uh, the request of quarantine. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry. So with, with regard to China at present, uh, the uh, requests of quarantine, uh, it's for 21 day, which is 14 days in a hotel isolation, plus seven days at home. And in, another, in some other cases, they will ask you additional seven days monitoring, uh, community monitoring. And it is possible that actually these uh, seven plus seven days might be more or less strict in terms of uh, isolation, depending on uh, the city, the district, and the, the local community. But this number, as you can see, totally 28, is not by accident. It is actually match with what I have uh, been reading in different article, uh, which is related with the uh, COVID-19 to be the maximum known time of uh, incubation of the virus. And this is of course, is in line with the zero COVID approach. Uh, my personal bet and hope is that by uh, 2022, the second half, maybe the uh, requirement will be uh, better but uh, it will depend on how it's the um, evolution of the pandemic, of course. So at present, the uh, SMEs uh, have problems, several SMEs because of this have problem to send their technical staff into China uh, due to the quarantine, because seems uh, many of them are not willing to come to the, the time to be spent in the quarantine. And also this is uh, very expensive for uh, SMEs to considering, and but not only considering that you have to keep maybe one uh, for one month, one valuable asset for technical maybe assistance or some technical expert blocked in one uh, location uh, for uh, quarantine. And this is not only applying to China, but in general to all the country with, which require uh, longer long time for uh, for quarantines. So this has given also opportunity to implement, uh, we will see this a bit also later, to implement some uh, digital solution uh, and some hybrid solution with uh, some uh, uh, companies that are located in China that provide technical support and can connect in remote with the headquarters to support in a technical implementation or uh, after sales service or some technical uh, assistance or some company have started to uh, apply uh, VR and remote uh, assistance uh, or remote training. 
Next slide. Uh, so uh, this is uh, uh, instead uh, another news which could, uh, together with uh, another news in the China dailies recently, is making a uh, hope for a uh, uh, sooner opening. Uh, for example, this news uh, recently released in the Chinese uh, China Daily, which is one of the major uh, newspaper, uh, uh, see the possibility of uh, China to open when uh, over 85% of the population is vaccinated. And this could be also one of the purpose of this facility you can read about in the Guangdong area, uh, which might expect a greater number of people to, to enter. And uh, uh, also with regard to this facility, we should not forget that uh, we have been told there might be some other pandemic in the future. Of course, we, have, uh, we hope this will not happen uh, uh, soon and we hope this will be very, very long time far uh, from now. So this could be also, uh, um, let's say a testing for be get ready for the, for, for the future pandemic. Uh, so we, this is all, anyway, this is all guess. Uh, only time will uh, will uh, will tell us what is uh, going to actually happen. Uh, I, uh, as mentioned already, I expect, uh, I hope next uh, uh, year, second half of the year, will be a bit more uh, relaxed. But I don't expect that the quarantine will disappear uh, soon. Next slide. So from this graphic, you can see what has happened to the uh, foreign resident population in, uh, in China. Overall, as you can see in 10 years, the population has, uh, has increased. Uh, but if you see the contribution of a foreign population to the total of China's population, this has been also reported in the uh, uh, position paper of Yu Chamber, is 0.07%. Uh, and if we take Japan as a benchmark, which is what is actually uh, done in uh, many other cases when trying to estimate the possible uh, the future scenario for, uh, for China, we can see that the ratio of the population is not that, uh, uh, that significant in, in, uh, in general. And if we analyze a bit in detail which uh, are the um, different countries that contribute to this uh, population? We can see that in general, in uh, Asia, uh, sorry, in uh, East Asia, uh, the majority is the Chinese, Japan, or Korean, or other uh, Asia Pacific area, which are uh, closer geographically and culturally. But this is uh, actually what happens also in uh, in uh, Europe and in Mediterranean in uh, in uh, in general. So the people prefer to move to uh, generally speaking, to closely uh, geographical uh, geographical area, and uh, this will also mean some requirement that we will see later uh, to bring uh, European people into Europe, which is uh, also what is requested to bring Chinese people in uh, into Europe. Uh, next uh, slide. So we see the foreign population has uh, uh, increased. Uh, but uh, at the same time has been redistributed differently within the different uh, uh, cities uh, in, uh, in China, especially the major city, Beijing, Shanghai, and Guangdong. As you can see, uh, the population as uh, foreign population has been reduced in Beijing and Shanghai, while uh, Guangdong, um, and Guangdong area and especially Shenzhen emerge as a new uh, um, attracting uh, center. Uh, we couldn't find uh, De updated detail on which is the uh, base of different country which contribute to this uh, foreign population, uh, but based on uh, past uh, data and uh, some, uh, some uh, first-hand evidence, we can uh, assume that generally speaking, the majority are Japanese or from other Asian country, US citizen, uh, Europe, from Europe majorities from Germany and France. And additionally, there are people that are coming from a country with which China has uh, some uh, special agreement, for example, uh, Belt and Road Initiative or other development program, uh, for example, country like uh, Pakistan or from other Africa and South America country. Uh, but what is that makes uh, people uh, to relocate, especially to Shenzhen? Please move to the next slide. As some of you might know, there's been a new IIT regulation which will enter into force uh, this January and that which makes the uh, 
costs associated with the whole salary package for people relocated in Shanghai higher uh, because uh, until um, the next year, uh, sorry, not only in Shanghai, that was for the social security. This, uh, this new IIT law will apply nationwide. So uh, for the people which uh, were uh, relocating to China, uh, the company could provide a basic salary and also some additional benefit related to, related to housing, uh, the schools for the kids, uh, the field related to the school for the kids and a flight and some other, uh, some other benefit. Which, are, um, uh, which were not subject to be considered part of the salary, but uh, in order to align the regula IIT regulation of China to the international standard from 2022, actually this will become uh, subject to taxation. And depending on which is the, uh, base, uh, the, the starting salary and which is the range of IIT which is applied, the cost for the company could increase up to a 46%. So from a minimum of 20% to up to 46%. The additional uh, cost that uh, is making people move from Shanghai to other destination, uh, it's the um, starting from this August, a new uh, regulation require uh, the uh, payment of social security also for the people that uh, were uh, foreigner, which are uh, resident in Shanghai, which were um, exempted until, until now from applying the national regulation, which was released in 2011, which required, of course, to all the foreigner to contribute to the social security. So these two um, changes in the regulation makes the um, cost related to the salary of people uh, based in Shanghai uh, significantly higher for, for the companies. So there's been some change uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the hiring or some uh, people have been moved in other, uh, other locations. Next slide. <clears throat> so the, what is uh, making then uh, Shenzhen attractive, as you can see, is also the uh, policy for the make the um, a Greater Bay Area the new uh, Silicon Valley, new China Silicon Valley, uh, focusing on Hong Kong, Macau, Shenzhen, and Guangdong uh, as an integrated area which, with different uh, uh, role within this area. And one of the policy to attract the related talent is to uh, apply 15% uh, IIT on the salary, which if I'm not wrong is 1% uh, lower uh, than uh, uh, Hong Kong, for example. And uh, um, this, uh, um, this uh, uh, IIT uh, will mean that, for example, this benefit will mean that, for example, if your rate is uh, higher than 20 to 15%, you will need to uh, advance first the whole amount, but then the local government uh, will, uh, will refine you. Next one. <clears throat> so the, this also um, makes the... Uh, People moving to the uh, to the other uh, other destination, uh, which uh, are as you can see, some people are coming back to um, to Europe or, or or back to the uh, to the US, uh, and uh, also no, no new pro moving to new projects in uh, Eastern Europe. Singapore is being chosen as a um, uh, new uh, new area for. Uh, so for regional at the at the headquarters, and uh, uh, another uh, option could be uh, Hong Kong, China, special uh, special administrative uh, region. Especially now that there is one program is called Come to Hong Kong, which allow people uh, from uh, Guangdong Province or Macau, China special administrative region, to uh, quarantine in Hong uh, to avoid the quarantine in uh, in uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, and uh, uh, so they can move from uh, from that uh, greater greater Bay Area uh, to Hong Kong without the uh, quarantine. And uh, also there is a uh, this is a trend to uh, send uh, uh, maybe new new people into China together with the family because, as I mentioned before, there might be the need to uh, to stay for uh, for a while uh, without going back to uh, to Europe. And uh, also choosing Singapore as a regional headquarter. Uh, multinational firms started to do this um, since 2016, uh, 
show to be maybe uh, also a, a, a good uh, a good move since recently, as uh, I guess you heard, they have uh, um, suspended the need for quarantine for those who got a vaccine. And this can boost Singapore as a center of exchange in Asia Pacific region, including, including with, uh, with China. This can be also an opportunity for Europe to bring back some talent, especially some people uh, which were living in Shanghai uh, because of the international environment. Uh, if this is going to change, might be willing to move to uh, other more international uh, destination. Uh, and also because of the uh, of this restrict restriction in the movement of people uh, due to the pandemic, they might think about uh, Europe. Uh, but of course, uh, from uh, uh, Europe side, there would be also different European country will need to provide this uh, also uh, expectation in terms of uh, international environment. Uh, next slide. So here, in case of bringing new people into China, which are the procedure to obtain uh, the per work permit and uh, uh, the, the, the residence permit. As I mentioned before, for the new application, this invitation letter is uh, necessary. And we saw uh, already uh, which are the requirements in the next, uh, you will see uh, some more, but uh, uh, here is uh, uh, also one of the requirements together with the, the different category of visa uh, that can allow you mo uh, more easily to get the work permit. As you can see, you have ABC talent, and uh, this is based on some uh, uh, requirement. Uh, green cards uh, also will, uh, as I mentioned before, will allow the people to uh, get a permanent residence permit, which uh, we already saw could be an advantage in case of uh, similar situation like the, the, this, uh, this pandemic. And this could be uh, obtained based on uh, some specific requirement in terms of contribution to, the, to, to China. Uh, if they are overseas Chinese, it's easier to uh, apply to this, um, this green card, or if it's a, some uh, special, uh, highly recognized uh, talent. Uh, for family reunion, uh, for new uh, visa application at the moment is not so easy, but uh, uh, we are seeing some uh, cases, uh, as mentioned before, on case by case base, which have been able to bring uh, also family members. Next slide. Here in this uh, graphic, you can see which are more or less the requirement to be A, B, C talent. Most of the people who get working and residence visa to China uh, are enter into the B category, especially for people which are hired by uh, SMEs. And one of the challenges for SMEs is related with the people which do not have at least two years working experience after graduation and are not a uh, university degree. So these uh, are the basic requirements uh, that the person you hire has a university degree and that they have two year working experience after graduation. So when these people is hired, what is important is that the two years experience and also the certificate, it's related with the work they are going to do in China. And the same is apply if you change, uh, if you hire some person which is already based in China that has to change employer uh, to be hired from you. Uh, they also will need to, uh, you also will need to focus in people that have a visa uh, uh, work permit, which is already related to uh, the same kind of job they are going to perform in your company. Otherwise, at the moment, you will need to uh, apply from, uh, from zero as if they do not have a, uh, the the uh, this uh, this uh, this visa already. So another uh, option in case the people do not have uh, a bachelor degree or um, the two the two years experience, I think is a must. But bachelor degree, it's to uh, apply a very high salary uh, package. And these also apply for technicians. So one of the common problems that SMEs have when they bring talent into China, especially if he's a technical person, uh, most of these people do not have a university degree and these make it harder to, uh, for them to obtain visa, uh, work visa. 
So uh, in these cases, either the company apply a very high salary package, which uh, depends, this package depends on the location where you are, uh, your company is established and the requirement of the local authority. I, uh, either these or uh, they can demonstrate this person got some specific technical training from a well-recognized um, uh, training center and they have a certificate about that. So in this case, uh, there's been cases that these people could have uh, proof their unique technical expertise and they have been uh, granted a work permit and the, uh, and the residence permit. So this is a bit more, a bit in general, then of course, uh, if, you, uh, if, you have a, uh, if you work in some uh, uh, Western area of China, you can get additional score. If you have a knowledge of Chinese uh, certified by HSK certificate, you get some additional score. Or if you have a Chinese studies, uh, in this case, if you have Chinese studies, uh, be uh, sure which is the title of the person you hire uh, which is the, the name, correct name of their uh, bachelor degree, because some degrees are not recognized as the Chinese studies. So in this case, the additional core score will not apply. Next slide. So here, just a resume of what we uh, already mentioned about the Pew letter, especially for the people that uh, have to apply for a new uh, residence permit, a work permit but in general for anyone who is applying for a Pew letter. First, the first two points are the most important. Why you, why this person should be sent to China and why now in this moment of uh, pandemic and, uh, uh, and potential risk. And as I mentioned before, if you are able to explain why and you can provide evidence of that, uh, the authority are most of the time are supporting. Uh, so company, also the company profile and the company compliance and uh, record, good record of the performance in China in terms, in many terms, including uh, the capital investment and tax payment are um, relevant for this application to be successful. Next slide. Additionally, if uh, the company is related to one of these uh, industries, which are mentioned as a, a key industry in the 14 year plan, uh, 14 five year plan, and uh, uh, the person uh, to be working this uh, company as a relationship with some high level technical knowledge, which is considered uh, necessary uh, for, for China, uh, then there is a higher chance for uh, these people to be granted a, uh, including an A type work permit. And uh, especially, for example, in the Shenzhen area, as we saw, they could also have some uh, facilitation to apply for the uh, permanent uh, residence permit that we, we already mentioned. It could be an, um, an advantage for, uh, for a situation like the present one. And of course, there are also additional support in case the company established in a Western region, which at the moment are less developed than uh, the coastal uh, area. Other option uh, could be related to descendant of Chinese and Chinese study studying abroad. But as you can see in the next slide, please. As you can see from this list, the uh, topic related also to the uh, advantage policy for the uh, especially Chinese students uh, studying abroad uh, are related to a uh, topic of, uh, of interest that uh, for which China needs is, interest, uh, is in, in, in their interest and need to uh, uh, bring knowledge in, into China to gap uh, for this, uh, the, 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 to compensate the gap in this, uh, in this field uh, expertise. And uh, here we give some uh, uh, example of which could be the benefit that uh, the talent could, uh, could get. And uh, in terms also the, um, uh, the company indirectly uh, to attract these, uh, these, uh, these people. Uh, we have also, in uh, based on what I could find in the Shenzhen official website, we are also similar attraction policy, uh, and you can also find them in the, in the website if you if you are curious. 
uh, for non Shenzhen uh, talent. Next uh, slide. So taking into account all what we have been uh, talking so far and uh, the possible restriction on, on mobility that uh, we mentioned could uh, last uh, for a while, uh, but also based on my uh, experience uh, uh, working with, uh, uh, with people having to do with uh, doing business with China, uh, we in, uh, me and my team, we made a list of uh, possible characteristics that uh, the person that should run your uh, China business might have. And actually those characteristics have never actually changed. First, first of all, uh, we think should be an independent person as it might have to handle alone a certain level of uh, complexity. And uh, this will require uh, the effort from the headquarter to trust and, uh, and delegate, which sometimes could be a challenge for uh, some uh, SMEs. But this challenge, if not faced, could come at a high price because you might send the wrong person, which is just an implementer and a controller. And this can cause some inefficiency in managing the local team. Or maybe you can lose a good talent that doesn't feel too fit in the company culture. Flexible, uh, well, we, I think we all learn what, why this is important during the, uh, the, the COVID uh, pandemic, but is especially important uh, in China where the regulation have, uh, um, can, can change and uh, the changes can be uh, more frequent, frequent and unexpected. So a person which is too structured and too uh, strict might, might feel uh, uncomfortable in, uh, in this uh, uh, dynamic environment. And also flexible means to learn from a different culture and respect the, the difference. Last but not least, uh, I uh, would like to mention this anti-fragile characteristic, which is not resilience. We hear and read speaking a lot about resilience, uh, but actually uh, resilient uh, permits means that you stay the same even after a shock, while anti-fragility, -fragi which is uh, being a uh, term created by Nic Nassim Nicolas Taleb, makes you stronger after a shock, which means you improve. So this is uh, additional uh, skills that the person to be sent here could, uh, could have. And uh, uh, this is uh, Nassim Nicolas Taleb is the same author of uh, Black Swan. Additionally, someone which has a Chinese study background and uh, speak the language could be a useful asset to, be, to bridge the complexity between the uh, headquarter and the China Chinese unit, but a person with just Chinese study might not be uh, might not become a manager because you give the title of manager or director in a, uh, in the business card. So it is necessary to provide a, a training, uh, for example, in a, in some accounting management, people management, and also the company uh, product. So if the company is more focused on the technical aspect of the uh, product, probably this profile should not, is not considered so, so suitable. Uh, uh, though, uh, so even in this case, even if you choose to send a person with a more technical background, still will need to have some support in some other area, uh, training in advance, uh, some other area which is not familiar with. And also we, suggest we recommend also some training about China as, as you have been uh, hearing in, the, in advance you have this uh, uh, platform through USME Center that can provide also uh, this, uh, this kind of training. Um, and the person maybe should be a person that consider highly this as an opportunity and does not mind as mentioned before to, um, to be uh, to stay for a while without moving frequently between, uh, between uh, Europe and China. Uh, for the question, if must be a foreign talent, uh, my answer would generally be yes, not only for SME, but especially for them. And the major, ma major reason is because uh, this person will need also probably to interact with the, some admin staff of different departments in the headquarter. And for some cases, for some SME, these people barely left, left their uh, geographical area. As maybe some of them don't speak English very fluently. And also for these people, 
we recommend to give some training about uh, about how to how it means to do business with the, with China and working with the with a different uh, different culture. Uh, because, for example, I, I one case uh, we met a Finnish manager which was spending most of his time translating uh, drawing from Finnish to China to English. Uh, so I think this is also some effort that the headquarters uh, should do to support their team in China. And another frustration that comes from the Chinese, especially Chinese team. Sorry if you hear some noise, uh, an ambulance in the background. Um, yes, sorry. Uh, so if, uh, if the, um, the feedback from the headquarters is not so fast, uh, this could create also some frustration in the, in, in the local team. So uh, be aware of the different speed and have some person that is able to manage this uh, different speed. So also an option could be to hire some uh, Chinese talent into the headquarter uh, as a support and maybe give the responsibility of Asia or China area to some uh, Chinese talent in the headquarter. Um, for the uh, contractual condition, generally speaking, uh, now the uh, trend is to have a local contract, uh, but more and more people might feel more secure to have uh, to be hired in Europe and to be seconded uh, uh, into China, so have a, a displacement contract. Uh, but this will depend, of course, on the needs of the uh, company and uh, of the specific need of the person. What we have been sharing here is just some general suggestion and advice. Uh, but of course, you have to adapt this to your specific uh, case and to the person's specific uh, uh, characteristics. Next uh, slide. This part of the presentation, since we, I guess, I guess we run out of uh, time, uh, I will move it a bit more uh, quickly. Uh, so as I mentioned this part already, uh, we uh, should be able, should become able to uh, navigate uh, between a physical and virtual work, workspace. Uh, the COVID-19, especially um, in uh, uh, Europe or other part of the world has uh, pushed us uh, forward to uh, adapt this kind of uh, uh, new form of work and the, the, uh, the talents more and more expect the company to be able to provide hybrid solution in terms both of uh, devices, uh, working space, but also in terms of uh, contract contracts. Next slide. And uh, as I advanced already uh, before to be a bit before to be a very uh, diverse and international company, uh, you should have international talent in the whole of the location you, you have uh, established, especially in the headquarter. This uh, because we'll give the possibility to better bridge with the different location uh, you are established uh, from the having a headquarter people belonging to uh, that culture and that business, uh, different business environment could be supported to the other location, but also to your team in the headquarter. And this is also what expect, what is expected by uh, the uh, the new uh, the new talent to have a diverse and uh, uh, diverse working environment, which also can allow the company to have access to different resources to to face uh, uncertainty and problem. But diversity also means, uh, in terms of, uh, of China, to be able to understand the uh, difference uh, without judgment, the different uh, dynamic, and also, as been mentioned, some uh, values or some uh, aspects which are not uh, the same. And uh, as mentioned already, dialogue is the most important. So you need to find also one person which is able to have this kind of approach. Next slide. Uh, one thing which we all suffer and we are all uh, still, I think, in some different way trying to recover from the pandemic is the well-being. So also the well-being of the people you uh, send into China, especially in this situation of uncertainty and difficulty to, to, to go back to the uh, 
to the home, to, to, to the family, especially for some uh, specific uh, time of the year, which are considered important. Uh, so you have to take care also of the good health, uh, the, the well-being of, uh, of the people you send to China, no matter if uh, uh, for short time or uh, for long time assignment. And uh, uh, this, because of time, I will not uh, go further. Uh, but we would need to think about, maybe this is a bit more in terms of research, which kind of new identity will give to the people that, for example, like me, uh, enjoy to be moving uh, from one country to another and spend a lot of time on the uh, airplane. Maybe the technology could give us a new, uh, new dimension. Next slide. Last but not least, uh, how to get ready to the next, next uh, black swan or gray rhino to cite again, uh, Mr. Taleb. Uh, we have a clear, to have a clear company culture that can be expressed by clear value that can be used as a gu guiding principle for people to navigate uncertainty. Uh, put your people and their wellness first, as we mentioned, and uh, uh, because you can have a great product, but uh, if you do not have people to help you, uh, you cannot go that, uh, that far. And in this uh, servant leadership style, which means to put the people, put the people first and make sure they feel supported uh, can be a winning strategy because when people feel you take care of them, they will give you in return. And I'm sure about this, we have a lot to learn from European SMEs that went through the pandemic together with their, uh, their team. This is just to conclude and to say to not underestimate the return on investment that you will get if you invest in your people. Uh, this also apply, of course, to the person you will send to China. Thanks a lot. This is my uh, end of my presentation and I look very much for your question. Thank you very much, Rosanna, for this presentation. Uh, I am aware that you have been working until the last minute <laughs> to ensure that you were sharing the most up-to-date information, which is what usually happens with the Chinese market. You have to, to stay <laughs> tuned on a daily basis to make sure that you are sharing what is uh, applicable right now. Um, we, we have received a few questions in the, in the Q&A panel, but I will have a first one that, uh, well, me as a representative um, of the USME Center here in Europe. I have received, uh, I don't know, uh, a dozen times in the past few months, and perhaps you have a better uh, position to, to, let's say, set some light on it. Do you know uh, when we can expect to open that China will open the borders? Is it going to be 2022? Is it going to be later? Is it going to be earlier next year? Uh, how do you see this? So I, I, as, I, as I will quote uh, Esther, uh, and I will say that I also do not have <laughs> the crystal ball, uh, but as I, uh, as I mentioned before, um, my personal expectation is the second half of, uh, is my bet, I also for myself, because it will be two years, I, I don't see my family. So uh, uh, this is what I, uh, I hope and I, uh, I, I, I try to forecast the second half of, um, of next year if there is no significant change on the epidemic situation. Uh, and I guess, but this is my guess. So, uh, and, uh, this, and I guess if most of the country worldwide will get a high rate of vaccination so that we make uh, taking always into account the, the key point with the zero COVID-19 approach. So if the uh, situation is aligned to this approach, then I think maybe uh, there is a chance. Still, the problem is the air, uh, airline, uh, which uh, the price could go from two, uh, 2,000 euro to 10,000 euro one way. So uh, depend on the country, so I also hope into the mutual recognition of the WTO vaccine from all the country. I think this will also give an help to uh, opening, I think. But Indeed. as I say, it's my guess. <laughs> 
totally agree. It's we are all guessing here. Uh, mm -hmm. I could see like different different positions, but um, well, I, it makes sense. Or based on the, the evolution of the of the communications, it makes sense that next year we could see some some uh, developments on these. And actually, you were mentioning a topic I wanted to 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 also touch base touch base on because another uh, participant is asking about it. The flight tickets for the mm -hmm. expats to come back home to visit the family apart from the, the quarantine uh, requirements could be also a kind of uh, discouraging part for, for those um, expats and for the SMEs that are hiring them, mm -hmm. especially SMEs, because we know that they have limited resources and they cannot afford paying flight tickets for um, a big group of, of expats working in China. Uh, this could be... a um, definitely a downfall but uh, do you have any tip for for those SMEs that are uh, facing this situation on how can they somehow compensate uh, the um, the lack of uh, so, sorry you, you you mean you you mean uh, SMEs that want to go back to so I'm, I'm um, yeah I was focused let, let on, the price on the chi Europe to China but as yeah, you flight tickets. Uh, so you have general. expats going back and forth uh, for yeah, holidays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it could be either those expats that are, uh, are traveling from uh, Europe to China because they are relocated now, but those also that are now based in China that they have to pay 4,000 euro to go back home. And this is something that SMEs <laughs> obviously cannot afford yes. uh, to, to pay for that. So this is a downsize. But in general, there are a lot of downsizes of, of this, let's say, lockdown. Uh, do you have any tip for those SMEs? me so, so how they can compensate these kind of situations so as far as i know um actually the price to go back to europe but i might be updated on that because i didn't check are quite lower and you do not have a, um as far as i know and my this might also depend on the vaccine policy of each european country as far as i know you do not have a requirement to go back to your country directly, you can do a stopover. So this usually reduces the, the flight, uh, the, the flight fee. Uh, I guess when you mean compensate, you mean uh, since the person cannot go back, what you can give them in return. I'm not sure if this is your meaning of the. Uh, so um, my suggestion, as I advance, is try to make as much as possible if the person has a family, to make all you can to bring the family with them, at least the close family, uh, wife or husband and, and kids. Uh, so this could be, of course, an, an help. Um, applying with the, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, family reunion. Uh, but uh, personally, I don't think there is something that can compensate the fact that you want to be with your family. But this is my... <laughs> So uh, if uh, the person is willing to stay, as I mentioned, for a couple of years, uh, this should be defined in advance. And what I see, for example, as a trend that some companies, but especially multinational uh, big firms, what they are doing is they are changing. So there are some people which stay here for a while without going back, is going back for a reassignment and new people are coming with their families. Okay. So this that is, is a good trend, tip. Uh, yeah. yeah, trying to create a cycle between the, the employees. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Uh, there is also a question uh, about, uh, well, it, it, uh, visas for Chinese citizens to Europe. Somebody wants to know if you have any guess or what is your uh, your opinion on how, how this Which will be Which kind done. of visa? Uh, lesser. <laughs> for lesser purposes. I guess somebody here wants to know if, if we will be able to receive Chinese tourists later uh, when the borders are opened as, as much as before, or you see that the Chinese uh, authorities might be putting some restrictions based on the conditions of the, of the COVID-19. So here we have two different approach. One approach is called reciprocity. It's European approach, right? And the other approach is uh, uh, zero COVID strategy, zero COVID approach. So these two approach should find some alignment uh, as any other <laughs> topic which has to do with this. So I think uh, um, maybe it should be asked this question more at Europe U level than 
yeah so i th i think if you follow the reciprocity i would say until european citizen cannot travel then also chinese cannot travel i, I would say because we we are seeing this being applied also to uh, uh, chinese business uh, also chinese people want to travel for business to to europe but it seems it's also hard for them to get uh, this so okay uh, there is a question I'm going to mention, but perhaps I'm going to reply uh, on behalf of the USME Center. Um, when looking at the, let's say, requirements for visas, uh, somebody thinks that this is a kind of uh, um, require the, the requirements de demotivate the companies to settle in China. Uh, in, and this person sees that this could be a kind of protectionism. Uh, but from our side, what we see is not a protectionism, it's just reflecting the need of the Chinese market for high-end talents. That is why we see that the requirements are being uh, not higher than before because they are not, not higher. They are just a little bit different, but requiring, for instance, two years of experience from um, a person to be uh, um, hired in China doesn't seem really, really high. It is true that for um, talent type A, uh, when we talk about management, these are a little bit higher, but again, this has to be aligned with the management position uh, or a high position in a company. So just in response of this person, this is, this is our position. I'm not sure if you have a different standpoint or you agree with us. Sorry, you asked uh, me? Uh, no, if, if you have any, it, this is our answer, but I'm not sure if you have a different standpoint on this or, or you agree with, with this vision. So I, I think your answer is uh, in line with my uh, presentation. So yes. if, you, if, you, if you see which are the requirements of uh, uh, the kind of talent that could be easily granted the, uh, the visa compared to other, and as I also mentioned, the 14 five-year plan, so this is in line with that. But uh, as uh, I also mentioned, if you check the uh, Schengen visa attraction plan for the talent, is not that much different. There is a mobility within Europe. And of course, you uh, attract European uh, talent first. And then there is a list of need, talent needed. And you have also some attraction policy for them. So I think uh, it's... Uh, of course, the needs are different based on different uh, uh, goals, but uh, I think it's a common practice. Exactly. Thank you very much, Rosanna. 